Hello and welcome back to thejonas.net. My name is Donald Jonas. Now, in this video, for Essential, I'm going to cover setting up Webmin. Webmin is a great administrative tool. This will just complement the already administrative interface that already exists within Essential. And we're going to set up the MySQL and the groupware, the Zafra. I really like this lightweight desktop that they have on Essential. It's, it's really quick. So we're going to need some quick few lines of uh, information to install Webmin. You can go to my website, thejonas.net, and just type in Zential. There we go. And that's pretty much it. Let me just minimize this. Bring up the terminal. And just copy and paste. It's that simple. And just kind of go right through it and follow along. Remember the pause button is your best friend when it comes to these tutorial videos. Gonna make a directory. And now we're gonna download webmin using the old we get magic. There it is. Grab it, and we're going to untar it. This might take a minute to download, and if it does, I'll just pause the video as you're waiting for the download to take place. There we go. Actually, it's coming through pretty quick. All right. And I already copied the untar. I would read these off, but since I have it on the website, you can just grab it off of that. And we're going to change directory. And now we're just going to do a simple setup command. Configuration webmin, yes. 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 Port 10,000. Uh, default username is admin. That's fine. We'll give it a password. Do the password again. Use SSL, sure. It's always good to be safe. And start when the server boots. Yes. This will take a minute to configure. That's the nice thing about this environment. And some of these more closed environments, like Zimbra, the MySQL and the Apache and the PostFix and the uh, IMAP portion of it is kind of closed off. It's self-contained. Where Zafra, you can still take advantage of those uh, servers. And you can utilize them for other things, too, if you want. Okay, so Webmin is installed. Expand that. Let's go into Webmin. And we'll accept the certificate. And we'll log in real quick. Now, I like to be able to attach to my SQL server from another computer. So I like the fact that um, I can use the administrative tools from MySQL, and they work great. If you upgrade, I've noticed, you lose that ability. So right off the bat, don't upgrade just yet. Go into Servers, MySQL, and if you want, you can set up a user. We'll just create a user. I'll call it Donald. The password. And we'll give him a youth access to pretty much everything. Okay, now I got a MySQL user set up. And you can also go back in there under MySQL. We'll save it. Under permissions, you can set up passwords for all these users, which is probably a good idea. Like if you go into localhost, you can change the password. And it'll actually, oh, I don't know. All you have to do is just go back in and type in the password you just created. So no need to panic. That was root. Or I could have used the Donald user I just created. And then you can go through and apply more passwords. And this is what I was referring to. Right now it's only connectable through the local host. I like to change it to any 
So on my network, I can attach to it from other locations. And that's pretty much it. Uh, stop and start it, and then you can do your webmin updates. That's pretty much it for webmin. Um, you have your email server here, and you have your Dovecot, which is uh, your uh, IMAPI server. It's going to minimize this for right now. Actually, let's go into the DNS. And there's my DNS. And as you can see, these are the dynamic records that have been created of the different PCs. Like this is my Windows Virtual PC that I picked up. Oh, I'm sorry, it's over here. This is my regular PC. So, I mean, the DNS and DHCP is creating records, and you can view them in Webmin. How cool is that? And you can delete them if you like. Another cool thing, thing in Webmin is you can go to the Samba, which is the domain controller. And you can go to the Edit Samba Users and Passwords. You can see the different Samba users. Remember Test and Donald. And here's the PC that joined. That's that virtual PC I joined. And um, if I want to delete it, and that takes away the trust, and then that person tries to log back on again, obviously they can't because I deleted it out of the Samba domain. Very powerful stuff. A lot of stuff you can do here. So for right now, I'm just going to minimize this, and we're going to proceed. Let's launch the administrative console. And log in. There's going to, we're going to have to do a quick few changes here um, in order to get the group we're working. We've got to create digital certificates. We're going to have to set up specific parts for the administrative console. And we have to turn the email part on. That's all relatively quick. That might take two videos. I'm about seven minutes into this video right now. Just pause it while it's logging in. And as you can see, it's currently using port 443. There's no port added at the end here, so it's just a standard uh, SSL port. We need to change that because the SSL port is going to be used for the webmail on the public internet. So um, it doesn't really matter what port that the uh, administrative console rides in because that's going to be behind your router. So we're going to have to change the port that it listens on. So let's go to System and under General. Let's just change this to, um, let's say, 444. That way it's, uh, as long as you don't have this port being forwarded to the internet, you're good to go. And it frees up the other port for your groupware. And we'll just save that. It's going to take a minute to save it. And I'll probably lose my connection here because, as you can see, I'm still coming in on a standard port. So let's just... Sometimes you have to reboot this. Hopefully not. Port 444. Connecting to localhost. Hey, there we go. That worked out rather well. And I'll just close this out. So now um, the administrative console is listening on port 444, which does free up the SSL port for the uh, groupware portion, which the uh, Zafra and the group will be coming up in the next video. So this pretty much concludes the webmin portion of the Zential um, small business server. Thank you for taking time to watch my tutorial videos. I hope they're helpful and thank you for visiting thejonas.net.